How do you stay focused with a short attention span? That is the topic for today. Now, before you think about leaving this video because of your short attention span, if you can just give yourself eight minutes to watch it all, I promise you that you will walk away with new and better ideas on how to stay focused. To challenge your attention, I'm gonna put eight minutes on the clock and I'll see you at zero. Staying focused is hard. As someone with a short attention span, I know that a bit too well. However, throughout the years, I've learned a few tips that's helped me stay focused when working and studying. To start off, one of the best tips I've learned is to train your brain to tolerate boredom. When we're working on something, it typically goes like this. In the beginning, our mind is focused and we're on the right path. But later on, as our work gets uninteresting or difficult, we get bored and our mind starts to wander off the path. We start to think about what to eat for dinner, what our friends are doing, does she like me? First off, boredom is totally natural. Our brain is hardwired to look for stimulants and new experiences, so you should expect your mind to wander off. The problem is, instead of letting our minds gradually wander back into focusing on our work, we tend to introduce distractions to relieve our boredom, like social media, YouTube, video games, which have all been designed to stimulate your brain for as long as possible. Ultimately, we end up very far away from the path we intended to go on. To stay focused for longer, what we have to do is shorten the time we spend off the path, shorten the time we take to get back to work. That is the goal, and to do that, we simply just have to leave boredom alone. The next time you feel bored, don't try to relieve it. Just drop everything, sit on it, and tolerate the boredom. Eventually, you will get so bored that your mind will crave anything to the point where you will just get back to work because it's more exciting than being bored. Another way to approach it is to see boredom as an achievement, something that you actually want to feel because then your mind will actually get stimulated from being bored, which will motivate you to get back to work faster. It's weird, but it can work. I'm bored. Now I'll admit, tolerating boredom is easier said than done. It's hard to tell ourselves not to reach for distractions. A helpful way to make tolerating boredom more achievable is to minimize distractions. For example, to avoid being distracted by my phone, I make it harder to use with the Digital Wellbeing app, which limits me from using certain apps during certain hours of the day. It is only on Android, so if you have an iPhone, the equivalent would be screen time. During moments when I really have to focus, I usually place my phone far away from my desk so I can't reach it easily. Social media is probably the hardest distraction to avoid nowadays. To combat it, I've altered all of mine to be rid of their addictive features, such as the feed, notifications, and comments. This way, even if I do open up social media, there's nothing to distract me with. If you're wondering how I got rid of all of these addictive features, check out my video, How I Cured My Social Media Addiction, in the description. In it, I go over all the settings and Chrome extensions you need for you to do the same. By the way, I know that you're reading the YouTube comments right now. You better scroll back up because you're gonna wanna know these next few tips. A lot of times we focus better when there's a sense of pressure and urgency, like during a school exam. That's when timers like this one come into play. The timer method I like to use is the Pomodoro technique, which makes me break down my work into 25 minute chunks separated by five minute breaks. I use a Chrome extension called Strict Workflow, which blocks access to certain websites during those 25 minute chunks. So even if I wanna distract myself, I can't. What I like the most about the Pomodoro technique is that not only does it help keep me focused, but it makes time for me to take breaks and recharge. Oftentimes we forget that we're humans, not robots, and we need to take breaks. Although taking breaks is good, what you do on your breaks is equally as important. Breaks can be counterproductive if you engage in things that increase your stress, like social media or video games, so try to avoid those. The best things to do on breaks are things that give you energy, like grabbing something to eat, taking a nap, and physical movement. Movement is a big one. We sit at our desk for hours and hours every day, and that's just not good for our minds and body. Incorporating physical exercise in your day, like bike or working out is one of the best things you can do to improve your concentration. Even doing something as simple as standing up for five minutes can increase your focus and energy by a lot. I have a standing desk from Autonomous and whenever I'm getting tired and need to give myself energy boost, I adjust it to my standing height. Standing gets my blood flowing and lets me get out all the aches and strains in my body from sitting for too long. I usually end up stretching too, which definitely helps out my back. Ooh. I think standing desks are an amazing investment because they let you receive the benefits of standing and movement, not just on your break, but while you're working. They allow you to be more comfortable and productive. I'm happy to say that Autonomous is actually today's video sponsor. I've had my Autonomous Smart Desk Pro for a while and I can personally say it is strong, adjustable, and its ability to save four custom heights with its keypad is really handy. If you're looking to increase your focus and productivity, make sure to check out Autonomous and use the code Jensen for 4% off your order. Link is in the description. Remember these? To be honest, I think fidget spinners were more distracting than helpful. 
but I do think fidgeting is very beneficial. Fidgeting has been found to stimulate our brains and help us focus, and it's something that you can do. Doing things that stimulate your mind while you work is actually a great strategy to use to improve your focus. If you can make your work more interesting for yourself, you're probably going to focus on it longer. My favorite way, and what I think is the most underrated way, is to talk to yourself while you work. It's funny, I don't see many people mentioning this tip on YouTube, and I have feelings because they don't want to seem crazy. But I will admit it, I talk to myself when I work because it's one of the best ways to stay focused. It's been found that when we talk to ourselves out loud, we become more aware of what is taking place in our minds and that makes us more deliberate and intentional. Talking to yourself is also just so much more engaging compared to working silently. You get to hear your own voice and make movements with your mouth, face, and hands. It's like being in a real conversation. Now, pay in mind, when I do this, I am 100% aware that I'm not talking to anyone. If you do find yourself talking to a voice that lives in your mind, you should go see a doctor. I now want to talk about coffee. Everyone knows that coffee can help energize you and increase your attention span. Now, what if I told you that coffee isn't as beneficial as you think it is? That it can actually be detrimental to your focus in the long run? You're gonna to want to hear me out on this one. Research from John Hopkins Medical School shows that performance increases due to caffeine intake are the result of caffeine drinkers experiencing a short-term reversal of caffeine withdrawal, and that caffeine-related performance improvement is non-existent with without caffeine withdrawal. That was a lot of words. Basically, they're saying that if you drink coffee a lot and you stop drinking coffee, it can actually reduce your cognitive performance and have a negative impact on your mood. The only way to get back to normal is to drink coffee, and when you do drink it, you feel like you're reaching new heights, but in reality, you're just taking your performance back to normal for a short period of time. It's a scam, isn't it? It's no wonder why so many people are obsessed with coffee. It's because they are addicted to it and need it to function normally. Now, this is one study, and to be honest, if you like drinking coffee, just go for it. But if you're not a regular coffee drinker, don't feel like you have to drink coffee to be more productive. Personally, I don't drink coffee and I've only drunk it three times in my entire life. The way I see it, I'd rather just train myself to reach the max level of performance at my normal state than rely on a drug to get me to a level of performance that might not be much higher. Something you can never go wrong with is water because it is not addictive and has been found to increase brain function and boost focus. It also doesn't cost $5 a cup. I have one last tip for you, and this one is talking more in the grander scheme of things. It is that if you continue finding yourself being unable to focus, even after practicing all the tips I talked about, it might be a sign that honestly, you're just not interested in what you're doing and you should just stop doing it. Now, if you're, for example, studying for a mandatory exam in high school, you don't really have a choice to not do it. But if you're in university studying for a degree you're not really passionate about or working a job that is unfulfilling, you have the power to change that. Of course, these situations are much more complex than how I'm presenting them to be, but I hope you get what I'm saying. We all have one life, and if you're forcing yourself to do something you don't like, maybe you should give yourself some time to think about why you're doing it in the first place. The greatest way to stay focused on something is if you're passionate about it. When you find fun in your work, you won't need to worry about tolerating boredom or minimizing distractions or fidgeting or whatever. You're going to naturally focus on doing it. And that is zero on the clock. Congratulations, you have made it to the end. Comment, my attention span is over 9,000 if you're here with me right now. I hope you learned a few things in this video and if you did, be sure to like it, subscribe if you haven't already, consider checking out my other videos and peace out.